everyone my name is Katie Masters this is the lovely Allison and tonight we're going to have a little discussion let's drink so our footnote for tonight is does classical literature have to be upsetting or melancholy we've got the right lighting we've got like our fourth drinks wait one two don't count we have enough drinks in us to uh, to talk to you like adults now. While talking to some wonderful people on booktube recently, we have come to the realization that whenever I see a recommended literature book and they say this is recommended literature, it is the most depressing thing I have ever read. It's pretty common. My friend here informed me that when I say literature, I mean post Modern, postmodern literature. Postmodern so, literature. So Hemingway, for example, really none of his characters make it out very enlightened or happy. Mm -hmm. Or if you like F. Scott Fitzgerald, mm -hmm. he is an Gatsby. amazing writer. He's considered a classic novel. But he is so depressing. Even the Great Gatsby, as good as it is, is a very depressing ending. A lot of the Sorry to ruin it for you all. It's a depressing ending, but you should read it. A lot of these books, by the end of it, you don't really feel better about yourself. You feel like you've experienced something. Yeah. And that, that unto itself is a plus of the genre, that you do get to experience something. But you you don't come away feeling like you have rainbow and sunshine in your heart. You kind of feel like you, you it got cut out with a spoon. <laughs> Why is it that literature, when it's picked by the critics to be in your curriculum for high school, college, etc., why do they choose depressing topics? Why does depression have to be more emotional than, than happy. happiness? Happy is a very powerful emotion. It's a very powerful, same with love. Love moves mountains. If, if I were to take a complete utter shot in the dark, well, like an, an educated shot in the dark, <laughs> um, I would say like, you know, when, when you're teaching narrative as a whole, it usually goes from, you know, the inception of the story to rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. That resolution is almost always categorized as the happy ending. So things that challenge the happy ending are seen as revolutionary. But there's a reason why the happy ending is the teaching medium and is the standard. I like a book that I can come away feel it like I learned something, like um, Andy Weir's The Martian. When I was done reading The Martian, I had like such a good happiness kind of welling up yeah. in my chest like this is what human survival does and how humans take care of each other that was really powerful so good on you Andy Weir if you're one of those people who's in charge of putting the next great American novel onto the curriculum why aren't you choosing ones with a hopeful message at the ending because life is depressing enough like reality is depressing enough we like something hopeful to hold on to. High, especially high schoolers going through the, oh the, my God. The, the dramatic changes in their lives from going from adolescence to adulthood. It'd be nice to have, a, a cut, like you said, a hopeful message that things aren't so great right now, but they will be okay. Here's better. a character that will help you through it. And I hear you. I hear you naysayers saying, no, no, life is always crap and things will just get worse. Maybe you should join the board of people who pick the books for high schoolers. So what about you guys? What about you viewers? Do you feel that good literature does have to be depressing or angsty or not have a good resolution at the end? Or are we allowed to have happy endings? Or are we allowed to have happy endings? And if you do have a book that you're interested in uh, sharing with us that has a happy ending or a good message to contribute, uh, put it in the comment section below and we'd love to hear from you. Wow, you just wrapped up everything I wanted to say oh. in like a sentence. So comment, subscribe, do whatever it is you do on YouTube, and we look forward to drinking with you. Cheers. That eagles fly on a mountain high. Don't put that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> That's going in the video. I love you. I love you oh. too. That's probably really cute. Oh my god, it tastes so awful. No, don't drink it. Why am I drinking this? Exactly. Why did you make this? Because it was supposed to be a prop. I didn't think you were actually going to drink it. <laughs>